Hi guys, it's Ben here, it's another transfer video and it's already been an exciting window for the Reds. My last video just a few days ago, I recorded it and then literally about 20 minutes later the signing was announced. So that was bad timing on my part. It's now 20 to 9 on Thursday evening, so who knows, maybe in 20 minutes time we'll announce Nabu Fakir or someone else. But we're talking goalkeepers tonight. Uh, it's obviously a big talking point since Saturday when Loris Karius' two mistakes pretty much cost Liverpool, well they did cost Liverpool the Champions League final and I was kind of in the camp that had bought into Loris Karius uh, from January on onwards I thought it was terrific uh, it's very very easy for all the uh, naysayers now to go back and say you were wrong to buy him because he was ter terrific in, in that run, he really did help us get to the Champions League final, he was really good in the league, he had a highlight reel of saves uh, but all that hard work was undone by those two mistakes in the Champions League final. I don't think his Liverpool career is over, but whether he can handle the pressure in a season like next season where we are going to be competing for trophies, we have to be competing for trophies because everyone's seen the improvement over the last two seasons, Klopp's two full seasons with the club, but he hasn't got anything to show for it as far as silverware is concerned. And if Loris Karras is going to throw two goals into the back of the net, uh, in a big game and it's not the first time he's thrown goals into the back of his own net or, or made absolute blunders in his Liverpool career so there is psychological issues there, there are confidence issues there uh, and maybe he just isn't the man for the big occasion, you have to worry about that and we've got to be ruthless uh, and with Mignolet going out the door for sure then we need to bring in another keeper and why would you bring in another second fiddle? Let's you know, I know it's easy to say I'm not the man spending the money, but let's bring in a proper number one where there's absolutely no doubt in our mind he's not going to let us down on big occasions. So I've had a look at some of the options, some of the guys we've been linked with, and I'm going to talk about uh, whether I think there is actual genuine you know, opportunity for us to sign them and I guess my opinion on how successful they'd be. So let's kick things off with, I think, probably the most... Um, sought after among our fans, Jan Oblak. Uh, he is in those upper echelons of maybe not the absolute best keepers in the world, you, you, De Gea is your noise, but maybe those are the only two, but he's definitely right there below that. I mean, I'm, I can't claim to watch every Athletic Madrid game, but just seeing him in the Champions League and in you know half a dozen La Liga games, maybe he has been exceptional every time I've watched him. I know he's not perfect, um, but I mean, his, his, his stats and kind of his reputation do speak for themselves. And Diego Simeone is desperate to keep hold of him. Um, so he, he came from Benfica to Atletico Madrid, obviously, in 2014. He won a treble uh, with Benfica, moved for 60 million euros. Uh, Slovenian international, 25 years old. They've just won the Europa League. Uh, he's twice been in the La Liga and the Champions League team of the season. He is a terrific, terrific player. There's no doubt about it. His release clause is reportedly 100 million euros, which is 80 million pounds. So it it would be the uh, the world record for a keeper. It would be Liverpool's record transfer as well because I'm thinking Van Dijk's deal. Uh, and David Maddock from the Mirror is saying um, that he is one of the guys. Well, he is one of the two most prominent men on the shortlist, which is very encouraging. David Maddock is reliable. He was. Uh, He's been right there for a long time, but he was right there during the Fabinho stuff. He's one of the first to sort of suggest that it was going to be broken very, very, very soon. Um, and El Gold Digital in Spain and various other Spanish outlets are saying that Atletico Madrid are already kind of lining up a replacement. Uh, and it's Bilbao's keeper Kepa Arizabala, excuse the pronunciation there, um, a 23-year-old Spanish national. He's got a 70 million euro release clause himself. Uh, apparently he's already been lined up. Uh, by Let's Get Madrid as a potential replacement if All Black was to leave. Now I'm sure we're not the only people in for All Black. There are reports that Arsenal are also interested. Uh, but we are five to one with the bookmaker to sign All Black. So uh, the, the chances may well be that he does stay. Um, it, it, it is a hefty release clause. Simeone will, I'm sure, do all he can to keep hold of him. Um, but for me, yeah, I mean that would be a hugely, hugely exciting signing. Um, Leave a comment below with what you think about that potential deal. Uh, the other one that's, according to David Maddock, the most two, one of, among the two most prominent names on the shortlist is Alison Becker, who we've been linked with for a long time now. I mean, we knew about this link back in sort of January when Menule was getting replaced. Um, we knew we knew about it long before we played Roma in the Champions League semi-final. Um, so he's also 25 years old. Roma don't really want to sell him, but they have named the price. So this is very similar to what we saw with Salah last season. We ended up kind of meeting in the middle somewhere. It felt like it went on for a long time, and I imagine this would be a similar circumstance. I don't think this is going to be going on 
uh, before the World Cup. Obviously, Alisson is Brazil's number one. It's unlikely that we're going to disturb his World Cup preparations. Um, and not just that, but also it, it's going to take a while to negotiate with Roma. Um, they're no longer under as much pressure, from what I believe, uh, from financial fair play. Their Champions League run uh, and qualifying for the next season Champions League has massively helped them out there. So they don't have to have a complete squad overhaul. Um, now, Liverpool have reportedly not yet made an official approach, but they have contacted Roma as regards to his availability. Um, yeah, he's really established himself since joining from Internacional in 2016, uh, and Real Madrid uh, apparently are also interested, so much so that Cafu, um, who I'm not sure how he knows this sort of thing, but he said that Alisson would definitely go to Real Madrid, uh, which his agent has categorically denied. Uh, Steve Nicol, though, former Liverpool player, I'm not sure who he's been talking to inside the club, but he said, uh, as far as he knows, Liverpool have already made an offer, and it's just about the price now. So, there you go. Uh, that's, that's it. I mean, this it's, it's has already been going on for a long time. Uh, and because of the resistance of Roma, we, we, we know how they work. Um, and that they're not probably not fond of us after we've got such a bargain for, uh, with, with Mo Salah and we're not about the Champions League. So I doubt this is going to be easy. I don't think this is going to be a Fabinho-esque uh, overnight deal or a, or an Abil Fakir one, which looks like that's going to happen quite quickly, fingers crossed. Um, the bookies, again, have a as favourites but this this is much shorter odds of 13 to 8 um, so that's quite short there on uh, Alisson to join Liverpool um, again I mean I, I've probably seen a, even less of him than I have of Oblak but he's been terrific I know he's made one or two mistakes I've seen uh, just from, from highlights but you know um, less less than both of our keepers that we have at our disposal at the moment and he does make a lot of phenomenal saves he's a big imposing presence he's, a, he's Brazil's number one for crying out loud uh, it would be a definite improvement on what we've already got uh, another one that's been linked recently um, is Thibaut Courtois this has kind of already been shut down by, by goal but you know Courtois is obviously a massive winner. He's won the Premier League, La Liga, Europa League, FA Cup, uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, Belgium's number one, 26 years old, great age. Uh, and Damasio saying that we're interested. I mean, Damasio, do I take him seriously these days? Maybe not, but we, we, Courtois is obviously a man that could well leave Chelsea soon. His contract is up next summer, so whether it's this year for a, for a relatively decent price or it's next year for free, he is potentially likely to leave the bridge. Who knows what's going on at Chelsea, we don't know who their new manager is, we don't know what's going to happen there, we never seem to know, there seems to be overhaul after overhaul after overhaul there. Um, I guess, so yeah, I mean, who knows, we're, we're going to be massive outsiders, I'm not, I'm not sure if who, who else would, would be keen on him. Uh, again, the Madrid clubs might look at him, especially if uh, All Black leaves, and we know Real Madrid are after a new keeper as well, um, so we'll see there. Um, for me, that's, that's a no-go, and to be honest, I'm not his biggest fan. Obviously, I've seen lots of him, so all of his mistakes have kind of been been, been there for all to see. But I just don't I don't think he's been good at all this season. Um, he was great the season before, uh, and particularly in the 14-15 season when the when they won the league under Mourinho. But yeah, I just don't think he's I, th I just don't think he's uh, consistent enough, and um, you, I think he can beat him as near post. I, th I think. I think a lot of the Premier League's top keepers, with the exception of De Gea, are very, very overrated. I don't think Hugo Lloris is, is much cop. Um, Petr Cech's been, been going downhill for years. So, yeah, I, Courtois, I don't think there's anything in it, but you know, we'll, we'll leave that there. Now, one that there have been quite strong links to for a while, and I think a few weeks ago there was kind of rumours all over social media that this one was, was going to be the one. Uh, that was before Karras' mistake, obviously. Uh, it's Jack Butland, um, relegated with Stoke, England international, 25 years old. It would be a very safe signing and it wouldn't cost too much. Uh, well, Stoke do want 30 million, but considering that's what Everton paid for Jordan Pickford, um, I don't think that's a ludicrous price. I don't think it's much between them. Butland's got a howler in him as well. Um, but generally, probably, I mean, from, from what I saw from Karras in the second half of the season and what I saw from Butland, I don't think there's much in it at all. Um, I wouldn't even say Butland will come as a, as a short number one until what we saw from Karras, maybe maybe he would now. But um, yeah, Wolves are also interested, but yes, it's, it's a high fee considering uh, you know, they've just got relegated and um, 
the thing is Birmingham City are due twenty percent of the fee because of uh, the selling was awesome before. Arsenal also been linked with him. I think he does make more sense for Arsenal. Um, Arsenal are very much going to be in the market for a keeper, just like we are. I assume. I'm not sure what Unai Emery's plans are, but Petr Cech's been on the way out. He's, you know, I don't even know if he's first choice. I've been played quite a lot of games uh, at the back end of the season there for the Gunners. So. All Black, uh, you know, apparently they're in for him too, and Button, uh, I feel like they've been linked um, with, with him for ages. So uh, it could be that we get one or the other. It could be that we get one, they get the other. Hopefully, obviously, what well, I'd rather have All Black. But the bookies have got us odds on to sign Jack Button. There was one to six, uh, which is very short, but it's now one to two. So less money going on us to sign Jack Button, which is good to see because that would be a very underwhelming one for me. Uh, and just to finish the final one, uh, again, I don't think there's anything in this one really. Jasper Sillison. Um, Barcelona reserve keeper, he's only played two league games for them in two years, obviously he's uh, under Ter Stegen, uh, he's made 21 appearances for them, mostly in the cup, uh, but when he was at Ajax he, he was their player of the year two seasons in a row, he's a Dutch international with 39 caps, um, now his release clause is apparently 60 million euros, so you know, I mean even half of that would be ludicrous, he joined them um, for 30 million euros a couple of years ago and he's barely had a kick since then, so why we pay over quadruple that is beyond me, so I'm not even going to give out a time of day. So th th those, those are the five keepers that in the press recently we've been linked with. Um, it's realistically be between three of them maximum, I think, which is Allison, Oblak, and Butland. Um, so leave a comment with which one you think we should go for. Um, obviously, bear in mind if we do get Butland, that maybe frees up funds for an extra forward. Uh, maybe we're going to get an extra forward as well as Fakir, or you know, whether you want to call Fakir a midfielder or a forward. Uh, anyway, um, maybe that frees up funds for a Dembele or a Lamar, who I know are all interested, but someone of that calibre, a Pulisic, you know. Um, so it, I think we're going to sign four, three more players at least Fakir, a keeper, and another attacker. Um, Maybe another midfielder, who knows, who knows. But um, a lot of it's all in place, but yeah, the keeper has become, you know, it wasn't a priority for me at the start of, well, a few weeks ago. But now, obviously, um, circumstances have changed and suddenly we're linked with these keepers again, the, the, the top, top keepers, Oblak, Allison. Um, those are the two big ones. So, you know, I would love it if we could get one of them. My personal preference out of the two would be Jan Oblak just because of his pedigree and what he's won and what he's achieved. He's been doing it at the absolute highest level late on in the Champions League uh, for a very long time. But then again, I mean, I'm not going to be complaining if we break our transfer record or break the world record for a goalkeeper uh, either way because they are both obviously uh, highly sought after by the absolute elite clubs in Europe. We're able to pry these players away from clubs. We're able to sign Fabinho under the noses of Man United, able to sign Naby Keita under the noses of Barcelona. Uh, you know, Oxley chamberlain last summer even joined us rather than Chelsea, with the Premier League champions and offering more money. So there is a big appeal to playing on the open clock and uh, for Liverpool. Um, so let's hope we can get one of these big ones over the line. As I say, leave a comment with your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel for more transfer updates over the course of the summer. I'm sure there'll be plenty of sagas for us to get, getting our teeth into. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook for more. And I'll see you next time.